Patty, thank you so much for coming. We were talking about how we both love wire edged ribbon. Um, I said I can even tie nice bows with it like they do at the florist. Otherwise, they're pretty limp and floppy. But you're going to show us how to make our own wire edged ribbon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the neat thing is, is that you got your fabric. Maybe you might make something for somebody as a gift and you have a little extra fabric left uh -huh. over, put some wire in it, put it on the outside of, Good the, idea. of the box. And this is a, a big piece, so we can yes. do exactly That's that. That's just a strip that I did, and it's just a batik fabric. Mm -hmm. but, um, Saw? Yes, but it has this little wire, thin wire uh, going through it, and I did it all on the sewing machine. I didn't use a serger. And I like the variegated thread you use. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. this, uh -huh. this thread right here that I used on that one is actually 12 weight. And so it's a little bit thicker. A little thicker. Uh -huh. Yes. And also, it this one's variegated. And also, you want to use a top stitch needle for that. Oh. Uh, in the in top the of machine. the thread. Okay. Yes, in the top uh, of the machine. And the, the eye is large enough for that to go through. Oh, obviously. Yes. Yeah, it would have and to be this bigger. Is, you can get that in cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not necessarily shiny, but you can also put two threads in one needle. If you can see well enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you're going to show in a minute how we could create a rosette out of this, too. Right. So we can do this on any sewing machine, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. as long as you have the correct foot and foot. the correct thread. Uh -huh. And here's here's another thing that you need to do is make sure that your fabric, if it's soft, you put a little bit of spray starch on it and you oh. notice that it'll work Gives better. Gives it a little body. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you also need to have a nice straight edge. You don't yep. want any frays because if you do, it kind of catches into, into mm -hmm. it. This is actually a thicker thread, uh, maybe... Uh, I mean, an in-between thread from what you just saw. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, and the stitch length is close. It varies. Like Almost like a satin stitch. Point seven is very mm. close. Yeah. Yes, a satin stitch is about there. So, uh -huh. yes. And, and then, it's a 40 weight embroidery thread. Right. That's pretty. Right. And then if you really want to do it like an heirloom, this is, this is a real, real thin fa uh, thread. This is more of a 60 weight thread and a little bit longer length and a little bit wide, uh, narrower Closer. width. Uh -huh. Yes, and so you can take this 60 weight and even put the, the wire in this. You can see I got the wire well, this in this. This is the also. wire hanging out. I thought it was yes. a piece of thread. <laughs> it's yes. so narrow. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's very thin th uh, wire. And um, this is al also, um, you can use a woolly nylon thread. And this goes in your bobbin and this thread has it's a, a little bit, stretch. Yeah, uh -huh. a little bit of a spring back, so it covers the space. Okay, so that shows us. And, and what's fun, I bet, is to just experiment with different right. ones. Well, and one of the reasons you experiment is to find out what the, the fabric behavior and the thread behavior are sure. going to do. Mm -hmm. And so here's again that that heavier thread that I used. And you can see I widened the stitch, uh -huh. I lengthened the stitch. It on almost this looks one. like a zigzag, right. doesn't it? And sometimes you can get almost that rolled and whipped hem uh -huh. look, like a hand stitch look, if you make the length a little bit longer. Okay. And Lengthen then it. you can also, instead of putting wire, you can put cord to give a little stability when you wanted to go around the edge. So you might want to do maybe some napkins. Oh, yeah, that and would be good. And, of course, this is nice because this is two, both sides, both sides. are the uh -huh. same. But you don't always get that with some fabrics. Then this is cut on the bias. And when I oh. cut the bias, then I get a little bit of flute. If I just put a little tension on the fabric, it just flutes a little bit as you go. Kind of call, is this what they call that lettuce edge? Right. One name for it. Right. That's pretty. So cut on the bias when you want to achieve that. Right. Great idea. And most people do this on the serger, but not everybody uh -huh. has, has a, a serger. serger. Right. So what I wanted to do is show you how you can achieve the same thing with the sewing machine. So the wire is actually in the bobbin? No. No. The wire will go on the top. Oh. You have regular thread in the bobbin, regular thread on the top. And then you also really need the correct foot. Now, which one do we use? This is a cording foot. Mm -hmm. And it has a little cut-out tunnel underneath, so it allows the thread, or the thread to bring the fabric around. And it actually goes around the top. I see. Yes. I... And if you don't have 
If you don't have that kind of foot, you can also use a larger pin tuck foot mm -hmm. like this. Pin tuck. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. Uh -huh. This Wider. is where it would go in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you want maybe this kind of foot where it's open at the front. It's very important to have it open and have a slight tunnel underneath in this one also. That's a decorative Plus stitch foot. Plus you can foot. see through these. I like that too. <laughs> right. That's helpful. Okay. Right. All right. So the uh, other thing that you need to do is make sure you place your fabric in the correct spot. So when I go, when I put my fabric down, I want to make sure that I'm just past the e e center. Where the, the needle, edge. that mm -hmm. the needle is. The edge of the thread, right. Okay. And so when I swing, I'm going to just catch the edge of that thread on the edge of the fabric. So as you watch it, you'll see that the needle will swing to this, mm -hmm. will catch the fabric mm -hmm. and roll it. So you and always want to start, like give an inch, and then yeah. you start inserting the wire. Yeah, because otherwise it's kind of probably going to eat eat the fabric. And mm -hmm. then all you do is you get started and then you just stick the wire above in the little tunnel mm -hmm. and as you're stitching it will grab the wire into that mm -hmm. little looping that it does and the wire really pretty much stays right where it's supposed to. It does. And this is a gate, this is a real thin wire but it's mm -hmm. insulated wire. Oh. So it has a little bit of a grab Rather than it's like not jewelry, yeah. uh -huh. jewelry wire doesn't have any coating. Oh. So this has a little coating on it and it, That's good it grabs to know. the fabric. Mm -hmm. So it does really well. Well, I've, I've never seen that and it's also very pliable too. Yes. Okay, yes. well now you've showed us how easy it is to do. Let's uh, show them how to make a rosette. Oh, well, you <laughs> just all you have to do because you've got the bottom is just pull up and take your front down, your center. Kind of hide that. Yes and then you just start rolling. And because you can squish the bottom. Because of the wire. Right. That's what I've always loved about it. You just begin to go around that whole center mm -hmm. and it just basically pulls itself up and then you just kind of can push down that center part and it, it works. Gosh, you could make a lapel pin, so right. to speak, or flower. Right. You, like you said, you could put it on, on a package. That's a great yeah. idea, too. And it, it works because that wire gives it that little extra And when you get through, movement. do you usually take a pin or a thread and, right. and tie it off? You just tie it off at the uh -huh. back. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for showing You're all welcome. of this to thank us. Thank you so much for having me.